Delicate child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more than that. Could I interest you in a bucket? <laughs> Do you think you're a grown-up? Part of me is. Part of, yeah, part of me is. Part of me is quite ancient, but uh, part of me is still very, very much, uh, very much uh, 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 just William up here. I think. <laughs> yes, I love, I love whimsy. I love playing. You know, I love kidding. I love teasing. Teasing, oh dear, and I love uh, playing uh, uh, gags on people. Yeah, tricks on people. What kind of Kid, were you? Um, yeah, pretty normal, I think. Pretty normal. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps a, a little bit odd. Perhaps just a little bit odd. In what way? Uh, I'm, I'm the middle one. I've got uh, your younger sister and an older brother. Uh, and I was the one in the middle. Um, I'm very intellectual. Very intellectual, very, 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 very intellectual. I used to read The Wizard and The Hotspur and The Rover. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. And by reading the, these... <laughs> my mother used to call them Tupney books. And reading these Tupney books, I, uh, I I wanted to be a hero. I wanted to... Uh, we had a marvellous childhood all around Notty Ash. There were all sorts of lots and loads and loads of fields and trees. So my hobby was really... Um, my, my main uh, talent was falling out of trees, <laughs> uh, digging holes and setting fire to my coat. We, we, we went to a band, gangs. Yes. Uh, uh, ours was the Crows, and there were about uh, half a dozen of us. Just, just, just like just William, just led a, a absolutely wonderful, wonderful childhood. So just... Uh, so, happy, be, being, happy kid. I was a very delicate child. Were you? No, not really. <laughs> you see, there are two biographies to every comic. There's one, there's the, the true one, the true story, yes. which is very really ordinary, and then there's the one you make up and you tell the uh, you tell your punters about. But I was very delicate, I was very small. My mother used to carry me around in a handbag, and I was so tiny. I, I, was, I thought her ballpoint pen was my brother, and, and I was mad jealous of him because his top unscrewed. <laughs> and this little boy next door refused to have me as his imaginary friend. <laughs> When I was a little bit older, my father, my father loved, and my mother, loved variety. Loved variety shows, so they used to take us every week. We'd go once or even twice a week to theatres here on Merseyside to see uh, shows. And that's when I fell in love with the stage, that lovely, uh, beautiful, uh, golden box that you stared at. And all these little pink lights, which I found out was a 38 pink. You know, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yeah, 38 lamp. <laughs> <laughs> a pink, a lovely pink and gold world, and uh, a, a band that went rum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum, and uh, all men in evening dress. And these people would come on uh, and tell jokes and sing and juggle. And uh, because I was the, uh, a, a little boy who read The Wizard and the Hotspur, I realised right away that the leader of the gang, the, the engine driver of any show, the, the boss man was always the comedian. He seemed to be the one, uh, and so I wanted to be a comedian. So I said to my dad, Dad, how, how, when I was about seven or eight, I said, Dad, how, how do you comed? How, how do you comed? And he was a marvellous uh, joke teller, my dad. He was a very, very funny man, very, very, probably the funniest man I ever knew. And he was, uh, he told me jokes, and uh, so I started to become a comedian. So you knew really early on that's what you wanted to do? Uh, uh, sort of. I, I did want to uh, be in control. Yeah. I am a control freak, so yeah. I, I wanted to be in control. And so I used to, uh, now and then we'd give backyard concerts. Oh, did you? Oh, yes, backyard concerts. Admission, one cigarette card, <laughs> or two conkers. And, uh, was that just you, or with your oh, just Oh, I, I, I wrote my brother and sister in as well, and anybody else I could. And we'd do, we'd, we'd just act silly, and I'd, I'd do, yeah, do a turn. Brilliant. I had a little Punch and Judy show. And uh, then when I, I, when I first saw, as I say, I read The Wizard, and on the back of The uh, Wizard was almost advertisements, mostly from a place called Elliston's in High Holborn in London. Uh, I didn't know where it was, but I used to write these letters and send postal orders, and you used to get these little parcels back. Exciting. Of itching powder, stink bombs, and a marvellous thing called a sea backroscope. Sea backroscope? A sea backroscope. It's like a piece of plastic like that, everything, like a monocle, and in it, little mirrors. And you put it in, and you can see if an assassin 
is creeping up behind you, which is very useful when you're nine years old. And uh, one day I saw this advertisement of a man carrying a box on his back. And there was um, a, a blurb coming to say, help! And he said, fool your teachers, amaze your friends, sense fixments in stamps, become a ventriloquist. So I did, didn't I? Yes. See, you tell it. <laughs> and, that's, and that's how I started. And my, my very first show was when I was about, I'd be about, oh, I'd be about nine years old at uh, one Christmas day, St Edward's Orphanage, just about half a mile from where I live. I did a show for the boys there. And the, uh, the father superior gave me half a crown. So that was your first that paid first gig? And about three months later, I did a show for school, when I went to school, I mean, not yet school, for the parent teachers, and the headmaster gave me a shilling. So you see, very early on in my career, I learned a, a, a very, very hard lesson how to take a cut gracefully. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you've been doing that ever since, like every comedian, in fact. Not taking cuts. No, <laughs> no, no, not so no, many, maybe. No, no, no. I've got some lessons to learn from you. None at all. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents see you performing on stage? Not initially, no, because I would never allow them. I would never allow them, anybody to, because uh, it would make me too nervous. I'd be too frightened. Yeah. But um, after a while, they came to see me, and I was, I was very, very pleased that they were able to uh, see me at the Palladium and on the Royal Variety Show. So they were actually in the audience there. Yeah, that was marvellous. Oh, they, were... I, I, they encouraged me. I was like, oh, I, marvellous. Uh, mother and father, um, my father used to write scripts for me, make all my props, and my mother used to say, Kenny, you can be anything you want to be as long as you really want to be. And so when she'd pack my bag with me, my props, when I first started, um, you know, props and, and stuff like that. She said, Kenny, I don't care where you go as long as you wear a clean shirt. Have you got a clean shirt on today? Yes. Well, there you go. Yes. You're honouring And your I brought a spur one with me, just in case you, you got me hot and bothered. Well, I'll be very disappointed if you're not wearing that one by the time you leave, then. Oh, as I say, I was able to uh, see them at the, uh, in the stalls at the Palladium uh, on the show there and on the Royal Show, yeah. Were they very proud of you then? Yes, yes, all they? Very, very supportive. Very, the whole family were. My sister, my brother, yeah, the whole family, everybody. I'm all, I've, I've, I've been very, very blessed with uh, people to help me. When did you fix the kind of comedy persona that you are, this remarkable creature that you are when you're on stage? I think partly that, that was partly due to just, just it being there, doing it. As I say, I wanted to be uh, an entertainer. I used to call myself Professor Yaffle Chuckabutty. I was hiding behind a character. You see, Professor Raffle, Yaffle Chuckabutty, operata tenor and sausage knotter. <laughs> and I used to go on with a, with a sort of a, an old tail coat, my shirt hanging out, um, collar all the way thing, my hair all, oh, my hair all over the part in the centre. And he'd say, Bye, you. Oh. That was the first, time I, the first time I played Glasgow Empire, which was the House of Terror. On the Monday morning, Mr Matthew, the, the manager, said, right, who are the comics? And three of us stepped forward to the band call. Right, he said, uh, no football gags and you get the bird on Friday night. What? Yes, he said, no, 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 no football gags because we need the seats. We need the seats. And uh, all English comics get the bird on a Friday night. So you can imagine, on the Friday, I went down with her. It wasn't, it wasn't a sort of uh, designed to be like that. It's just sheer terror. <laughs> and my first lines to a Glasgow audience is, I suppose, I suppose you're all wondering why I've sent for you. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a Scotsman uncoiled himself on the third row with the half a bottle of whiskey in his hand. He said, Cripes, what a horrible sight! <laughs> and fell back, and that was the first laugh, and the only laugh. So, mm, that was my... Uh, <laughs> so, you know, desperation. A lot, of, a lot of it was just sheer, uh, well, you know, terror, nerve. But it worked, didn't it, Kelly? Fear. And you kept it. I'm an optimistic comedian. So I go and say, bye, Joe, ha-ha. How oh, tickled, what a beautiful day, and all that nonsense. Yes. It really is a, a sort of... Um, it's very, very exuberant and very, very... Because uh, I, I think at the beginning of a show... It's the first 30 seconds, very important, you know. The first 30 seconds, uh, posh people, 
like lady actresses, they call it rapport. 